<laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Tuesday, March 12th. I call this special meeting of the Board of Finance order. And I call the special meeting of the uh, Board of Education order. Excellent. Uh, if you would stand and join us for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We are gathered here tonight to discuss uh, the Board of Education uh, budget. But first, do we have any members of the public that would like to get comment? Okay. Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to um, the budget discussion for the proposed Board of Education budget. Um, did anyone have anything that they wanted to discuss at the forefront or? Because we did get the, the tri board presentation of this um, about a month ago, mm -hmm. right? And we also got the uh, Board of Selectmen's cut. Um, there were some things removed, there were some things added back by the Board of Selectmen after the first Selectmen's cut. Um, do we have any specific questions? I know Glenn and Ricky, you had a question. I forwarded it to Colette. Um, I apologize for the delay in getting it back to you, but I did bounce that answer back. Would that be a good place to start if you have any questions or concerns? No, I'm good. Okay. We weren't going to do another presentation right. because you had it once before, so really we're just here to um, answer any questions you may have or if we need to elaborate a little detail about anything. Yeah, so we got um, Marsha put together a summary of um, the budget adjustments. I'm just kind of trying to call it up here. Um, where the, uh, the first selectman, I believe, uh, reduced the Board of Education proposal by about 480000 and the Board of Selectmen um, added back about four hundred five. so that leaves a cut of about 74000 No, no, actually they added back 275000 The other part of it could yeah. be the adjustment um, relating to the teacher, the teacher pension. Retirement. Which is not actually, it's, it's put onto the education side, but it's, it's paid by the town. That, that's okay. pretty well accepted. Is that the, one, the so 150? Is that the 150? Yes. So the, um, they put back in 275, the actual yeah. reduction would be 204,000. Yes. Okay. I apologize for that. Steve did mention that last week. Um, as of right now, obviously <coughs> that, that's a proposal made by the Board of Selectmen. Do um, you have any thoughts on that? If you um, would like, I can go to the genesis of that of that proposal yeah. and what I actually discussed with them. Please. Um, I believe the board of, or the first selectman when he uh, put forth the budget to the board of selectmen just took out all of the net investments as well as the uh, non-lapsing fund, which is how they came out. He came about with the four hundred seventy-nine thousand dollars. I. <laughs> From what I understood, he, he had thought that the net investments were all nice to have. Um, where, in all reality, there are several of them that are must haves, and we had discussed them last time. Uh, several to the point that whether this budget goes through, whether it's re no matter how much this budget is reduced, we must include these in the next year's budget. And so we will have to make adjustments or reductions otherwise. And I do have a copy of um, that, if you would like it as well, as what I gave to the Board of Selectmen. It was something that was retitled, right? From net investments to necessities? In investment necessities, investment. yes. Oh, well, you know what? Hold on one sec. The bottom of the program. <laughs> oh, I have it for it. Oh, you have that one? Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that one. There you go. So even when we presented back in February, we remember those investments. Some of them were very related to things that had to happen. Even though they were new investments, they were, you know, connected to uh, you know, uh, things that are happening in the district, not just choices. So, so that's not new. It's just uh, we'll do, we, do we have enough? I thought I mean, you know what? I don't think I I counted for all of your comments. I'm sorry. So I can work on Okay. All right. Here we go. So I, I can, we have another one here. 
I can go through these if you'd like. Um, the first one is the pre-K teacher. We spoke about that. Our, our numbers are large. Yeah. Our classes are large. Our um, proportion is not the 50-50 that we need. We, we have to have this teacher in order to reduce class sizes and keep the 50% uh, the proportion that we, that we strive to. Speech language pathologist goes along with that. This would be the speech pathologist for the pre-K program. The uh, caseloads are too large, and by having this this position, we will be able to uh, eliminate the contractual needs for our pre-K program, speech and language pathologists. Special education teacher at the high school, again, our special education teachers' caseloads are too large. They need to be reduced, bottom line. The paraprofessionals, the ABA paraprofessionals, these, um, quite frankly, is just to stay in compliance with the IEPs. We have students' IEPs, which necessitate a one-to-one -one para, and these paras will be for that. We have to do that in order to maintain compliance. The grade one through five science modules, we've started the rollout of the Smithsonian Science Module Program. This is to, um, to to uh, update our science curricula for the next generation science standards. We're going to start having science being tested on a uh, yearly basis in the standardized testing. We have to have the curriculum in order to address what the, what the students will be tested on. And the grade four through five reading program, this is one that started grade one through three. It's a, it's a necessity in order to continue the uh, valuable literacy skills that we're teaching our, our students. So if we subtract out the uh, contracted services that we will be able to find efficiencies for, not only with this, but throughout the district, then we do get the total of 275, 234, which is uh, what I had presented to the Board of Selectmen as well. What did the Board of Selectmen not add back? Um, well, they didn't add back $204,000. In their mind, that was just the total of the net investments minus this two seventy-five. dollars So the other net investments, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay, so technically, though, they're just not adding back money. It's not items because ultimately it's the Board of Education's decision as far as what to spend the money on. But in their mind, I think what they had thought would be the other net investments, which would be the... Um, ASL teacher, the strength conditioning coach, the um, extracurriculars at Wiskineer, the business team leader, ST Math program, and the and the world language program. Thank you. Does that mean ASL is not going to be a language option? It depends. Um, I mean, by the, we work with the money that we have uh, right now. Actually, our high schoolers and um, are already signing up for classes next year. And so if we have a significant demonstration of need in the ACL, ASL program, and perhaps not as much in French, say, then we may change our teachers to to have one program. Um, Dr. Ruby could speak more to that. Okay. Uh, I don't have the latest numbers, but a week and a half ago, there were more students signed up for ASL than for French. There's a there's a huge push and there's a huge push. There was just a big article in one of the major newspapers the other day on ASL and how it's just sweeping the country and how colleges are, you know, ex uh, accepting that as credit and there's a great interest. Yep. So we have you know, if we can't hire the ASL teacher and have that program go forth, we we will have to change all of the or we just schedules. Go French. No, we have students. Who, we have students who are taking French, but we have we just happen to have more of that time to phrase. Okay, thank you. So, what, what's the board of ed's reasoning for putting ASL before something like Chinese, let's say? There, um, where we know a large section of the world, right, and economics and, and everything like that is trending in that part of the world, and people that are maybe between 12 and 16, 17 years old are going to see a big influence of that culture, let's say, of that language versus, I would dare say, a smaller population of ASL speakers. 
ASL is actually the fourth most studied language in colleges. Studied? Studied. What about used? Mm -hmm. Apply? What's, is this like a liberal arts thing? No. This, this is it something where people want to take it because it's, it's, a, it's a trend or something that is accepted? Is, I'm it's, just it's struggling to understand why that's more important or more. We're, we're going to put $85,000 towards that versus something where one of the biggest populations in the world is poised to be very relevant here. There was many surveys done, actually, to determine what world third additional language, I can't call it a third world language, um, would strike the most interest. And ASL was above the, the, top, the top priority for both students and community and parents as well. Um, if the interest is not there, we could have all of the teachers, you know, that we had, and the classes wouldn't get filled. In addition, it's easier to find ASL teachers than it is some of the other language teachers. So again, we can offer it, but if we can't fill it with a, with a language teacher, then it's a useless class as well. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I think you, you said everything. What I was going to touch on is the, um, the surveys. It wasn't decided by a teacher or by administrators. It was just uh, the survey was sent out to students, parents, and community members, and it was for all three groups overwhelmingly number one. There was also a great presentation by Mrs. Holly given to the Board of Ed. I don't remember the date, but it's probably on the website. Um, very informative, and, and it wasn't even just based on the surveys. It was there was data in there to support it. Who's Mrs. Holly? The I know that um, you know, we've been driving for a third language in the schools for quite a number of years. It's been a long-term goal. Um, we've also been pushing for having uh, the language lab in the middle school and expanding that program is that one priority over the other. I know that the world language lab in the middle school requires more capital funding for equipment and whatnot. Is there a priority of one over the other? Well, if we can't put a world language lab in the middle school um, that's um, commensurate with the one that we have put in the high school, we we could do a workaround for the time being. It wouldn't be it wouldn't offer all the opportunities that the world language lab would would offer. But when we came down to looking at how to prioritize things, we spoke with Eric Conklin, our technology director, to see how we could you know put something together to get by through this next year. If, you know, it's not going to afford students the same opportunity as the language lab, but, you know, we, we have to make tough decisions. Is there anything in this budget that isn't being included in this budget because it was cut last year with a reduction? That's not being included in this That year. is being included is in this year's budget because it was cut from last year's budget. Um, well, the World Language Lab was, was taken out of last year's for reduction, so it's back in this year. Okay. Um, school start time consultant. Yep, we st we, we'll be able to school start to consultant prior to even um, approving the budget for you all. So that was, but I think that's about it. So what would a 2% decrease from the department requested budget? How would that impact you guys? Overall, 2% increase. Decrease. Decrease from? From here, the department requested budget. What's currently being requested from the department? What, what, what would be? By department, you mean the Board of Education? Yes. So $800,000? Let's start there. Um, Wow. Uh, that would be. Wow. Sorry, I don't know. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. That. $800,000, um, quite frankly, we, last year, to achieve the $500,000 savings, we, we did a lot of efficiencies. We, we trimmed as much as we can. Um, we don't have any more secretary positions or custodian positions or administrative positions to really reduce that amount. $800,000, you're looking at positions. Um, not only are you looking at positions, you're probably looking at teachers. I, I will let um, 
superintendent yeah. or well, I mean, music director to address that? We're looking at increasing class sizes because we produce teachers. We would have to do that. Um, we would still have to the um, specifically the areas of special education, the three, the, the five positions, which is two paras and three teacher positions. We still need to have those to be in compliance. So we have to have those. So we'd have to look in other areas um, where we would have to make strategic cuts. Um, and so you're increasing class size, you're lessening program offerings, and that's what would happen. So you'd be strictly looking at just positions, teacher positions. No, 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 okay. not not strictly looking at. We would. Our, pro our process would, you would dictate our process. So mm -hmm. whatever you say is the number, we would have to go back to the drawing board and figure figure out what we would do. But what you would do could also help dictate what what drives our number. That's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you to, to get an yeah. uneducated guess. To get to that number, you have you're talking people. Okay. Eighty percent of our budget is people. It is a service oriented mm -hmm. business. So there there isn't more toilet paper to cut. There isn't more copy paper to cut and, and move away from anymore. Um, we reduced the custodial position, administrative position, a secretarial position, clerk positions last year with that $500,000 cut that you're talking about. So we've already gone on the human side of things. And so we would have to even go further because, you know, we're already talking about tabling the lab again. Um, we'd have to look at some curricular materials. And then we wouldn't stay on, uh, on course with a strategic plan. That impacts learning because. You need tools to teach the kids. The teacher needs tools in their hands. You need curricular, uh, curriculum belt. So sure, jump in, Lauren. One of the things that I, I talked about last week at the board meeting was that while you, you don't hear complaints from us on a regular basis about the impact of the cuts that we made last year, if you talk to parents and faculty members, the positions that we cut last year, um, the, the clerks that um, supported special education, secretary, um, and some of those positions, we feel those every day and we get complaints um, because we're, we're not able to deliver the services that people expect from you know, a school system um, when we don't have bodies. And it, what we did last year affects us every day. What I just asked about how last year's budget is impacting this budget by not hearing that all these new positions are being added back in. No, you're not. No. No. We're living. So you're still not going to. We're yeah. living with the reductions. Okay. In order for us to add those back in, that would <coughs> make us very large. Because we have the five-year strategic coherence plan, where we are trying to take the district from where it was um, three years ago to where it needs to be in, in just that five-year period. And built into that plan, if you looked at it, are um, all of the curriculum instruction, um, <coughs> professional <coughs> learning needs for to, to bring the school district in alignment with the current standards, which we weren't in alignment with. And so the items, everything that is in the budget that's curricular, some of the, and, and then the uh, enhancements that we need in people, be in compliance for special ed, those are all part of a strategic plan that was laid out three years ago. Um, so so it, it's, these aren't things that like we we sat around and thought, oh, this would be really great, we could do this. It's, it's all part of a plan that's been there. And so since we have to stay on track to meet those educational goals that we, in order for our students to be prepared for college compared for jobs even compared prepared to go into the military if that's what they choose to do we have to maintain the the program development that we set out to do so do we need those positions that we cut last year absolutely but we couldn't put we can't have everything so we couldn't put those back in at uh, and um, take away from the strategic plan, which we have to complete because we're already thinking about what the next strategic uh, plan will be because we're coming to the end of this one. So I don't know if that if that helps. Yeah. And, and Rick, just one last piece, thanks for saying that, Mark, is the, when you look at special education, those numbers are ever evolving. Mm -hmm. And so with increased enrollment with, uh, of students with special needs, that's driving the compliance issues in those positions. So, so. Same 
kind of train of thought. Ricky's number of Earth's in introduction of 800 was catastrophic skies falling. There's 200 that's in here now, which is acceptable. So that seems to be the the bid ask, if you will. Well, what is there a number that, that you think is the big point? If let's say if it was 400, 400 gets you to the kind of 2.9 percent that we were looking at in in the model um, back in the fall. What, what, what would, I mean, again, I know you're not going to get specific, but what, what would that number look like? So that would be an additional, or what are you saying? An Addi additional in addition to the 200, I know, 400 total, 400, 400, 400 total, in addition to the 200 that the first select minority, or the select, board of select minority has removed. So we'll, we'll find, I mean, we'll find it somewhere. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to. Um, again, these have to go forward, so we'll, we'll look for it somewhere. Um, I, I, can I sit I here and say exactly where it would happen? No. We'd have to go, we'd have to look at it. And I can't speak to that without the full board here because that's a decision that, that has to go before the full board to be approved. Good. Uh, um, so you said it was a bid ask, right? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we still would like the money that we asked for. We, it's not like we, we said, oh, that's fine, right? We, that, that, the money that's been taken away so far by the Board of Selectmen is a takeaway from the programs that we as a board felt were important. Um, you know, we're, we're, we would just urge you to consider those cuts again, in addition to maybe what you're looking at going the other way. Um, I will tell you that when we went through this budget, we were sens very sensitive to the increase in spending year on year. That's why we didn't put in some of those positions. We scrubbed the status quo budget, um, which is in your book that you've received. Um, that looking at line by line to make sure there was no fluff or fat in there that are, that, that would be cut. I didn't find it any in that room, to, to be frank. So what you're looking at is a status quo budget that's basically flat year to year or contractual increases plus this list of items. That's all that's in there. So that says if you're if you're going to reduce from that level, it will definitely be fewer teachers, administrators, staff, support, custodians, nurses, somewhere. And that's going to be a hard, that would be a hard bit for us to deal with. Let alone going the other way, which is we've already taken away the things that would be good for our students uh, in terms of the new <coughs> programs that we have proposed. Um, in particular, though, two world language programs that we propose. Um, those, uh, those pain me immensely if we have to leave those on the table because that's been a very strong goal on our part. So I wouldn't call it a bid ask, to be enough. frank. Uh, <laughs> I, I, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, these are always hard discussions. Yeah. I mean, I know they are, because you have to look at the tax rate, and at the same time, you have to um, think about your school years. So Dan mentioned um, the model, right, that um, <clears throat> the Board of Finance had gone through after uh, a town hall had put that model together. And since it was brought up, um, I think it, it needs to be uh, cautioned that that model is not necessarily for you to put stock into, right, but more of a um, Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance tool to gauge where we are in relation to where we think we need to end up when the new school project comes on board and everything like that. Um, Completely agree. We'll throw that out there. So if we, if we do talk about the model, it's not necessarily that the Board of Education, because you don't need to fall within guidelines, right? And it's just it's just something that we need to keep in mind when we're evaluating the town, the debt service, the Board of Education, the whole package. I get that. That's all. I agree with that. So, but you're actually what you're saying is you'll never meet the model. Because what you're adding in now with the necessities blows the model out every year. You can't pull back any of these positions. These aren't any one-time costs. So this million five is going forward every year. When your model only shows a million going forward every year. So how do you? I'm sorry. What's the million five and what's the million? The, the million five is what you can't claw back. That's going to be included in the budget every year, correct? What, what, what is it? I don't understand. Your million five, your asks right now. Your teachers. Every these one of the none of these positions are one time. They're all. I'm talking about four hundred twenty-five thousand. That's why. I'm talking overall. Overall, your, your salary increases are eighty percent. We just talked about that. Eighty percent of your numbers. That was in the model. Yes, that I agree. These positions now weren't in the model, but they are in the model now because it goes above the three percent we talked about. We're at three point six, three point seven. So these aren't positions that are going away. These are positions that are always going to continue to be there. So we don't have like a net clawback anywhere. 
So as this goes, how do we stay within the model? How do you stay within a million dollar spend every year? Because your spend is only a million dollars up, right? It goes up for about a million two every year. That's your spend in the model. In the model. Mm -hmm. That we sold the school on, that we, we basically said, hey, we're gonna try to live within these numbers. The board of that never, ever committed to I that. said, I agree. They didn't commit to it. Right. But we they told the to town, talk. we looked at the debt that we could carry, we looked at these numbers that we could carry, and that, that is our cross to bear after we have this discussion with them and they present the needs of the school. And then we go in our deliberations and see how what they're asking for, what the board selectmen put forward for this department, essentially, fits in with the whole plan of the town. I I'll agree with that. But also, we didn't account for the 130 teacher's pension. We didn't account for a $300,000 decrease in ECS the town takes a hit on. So there's sure. another $400,000 built into town expenses that aren't on this side. So if this is where I think Dan doing the model is we, we got a, we supported the schools, totally the new school part of this thing. We supported the unified boards. Everybody preached new school. Nobody was negative. And here we are with these decreases, ECS and everything. The model becomes more important to me down the road here is we <coughs> stick try to stick closer to these three percent increases. And to me that's what we, we thought why why would we even build this model if we weren't like making it to base something. If the Board of Finance decides, the majority of the Board of Finance decides to make a, a reduction to be in line with this model and so be it. But that's not the point of the meeting tonight to hold them to what that model said. The point of tonight is to understand the needs so we can take those back and evaluate them in the context of the whole budget. All right. I agree with that. Ideally, and it's not going to be asked this, and I, I understand. But ideally, we would understand you know, the impact of this would lead to that. This cut would lead to that cut. This increase would lead to that increase. But I understand that without going back to you, that's not going to be exactly. provided. Exactly. So, that's a board so, decision. And, and I can't but, speak to that. So, 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 in a sense, it is kind of a number somewhat in a vacuum to fit into a slot. And, that's just the way it always is. So I, I, yeah, I tried to do that when I was sitting on yeah, the other side of the table one year, and it was really hard yep. to, because you just can't, and you know, you find yourself trying to make decisions with too many moving pieces as a board of ed. And the board of ed bent my ear a lot when I was in your chair about why I, we all just don't know how to do that. Um, so I'm going to disagree a little bit. I think the meeting is about we're trying to say, hey, we're trying to hold the 3%, and we're looking for them to say, maybe we can help. We supported the schools. We're asking for like a 3% is a number we're looking at. What can they come back and come back to us and say, hey, we really looked at this and we understand the position you're in. We understand the position you sold the town. Well, you know, I think it's a pretty it's a different question and a completely different approach than we go through this. Well, then that's the approach I'd like. I, you know, the, we're all in this together. We're all in this as a town. And we, we built this thing to look forward. We went through these things, these models and everything else, and it's 3%. Why can't we say, gee, what would the 3% mark do? What, what would that really impact? It's 40 something million dollars. It's not a lot of money to get down to 0.5%. We're not talking the end of the earth. What can you do to help us? What can you do to help us to maintain our goals? That's what I'm, where I'm at. What do you think the 3% is something that has to be uh, lived with each and every year? I think when you build a 20-year model, if you can't get the first year right, throw the model away in the garbage. If you can't get year one out of the gate right, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. I, that's, I would never be able to get away with getting out of your first year. Yeah, no, I, I understand your point, but uh, part of the challenge we're in, and it's, to be very frank, what we're in an interesting cycle with special education that, as you know, last year drove up a lot of costs, and this year, Absolutely. and this year, interestingly enough, when we're going through the current year, we're seeing exposures due to special education, and as you can see in the budget for next year, we're seeing exposures to special education. Absolutely. Those tend to come and go over time, having watched it over many years. I mean, I am hoping that there's a point where we, we come over the top and we don't have 30 kids in outsource in, in outplaced positions because of the nature of the timing of the kids and the things, and we give money back in those years. So I don't know whether 3% in a world where you're in this increasing situation with special ed is necessarily the right answer. It might be over the long run that you have some, you know, have some high years and you'll have some low years. So that's point number one. Point number two, uh, we are in a position where we've had a strategic plan to try and invest in 
uh, the certain things in the schools that will make our schools better. Um, that was part of the five-year plan that we're in place. It's rolling out new curriculums, there's statewide curriculums, there are things we're doing in the district. Um, that wasn't put into your model. I mean, it wasn't. So that's, a, that's something that I know floats slightly above the model. Um, and I don't know how to, Glenn, tell you that we would go take out other programs to compensate for that. That's, that's a, that would be a struggle. That would be a takeaway from our kids, and I, we should worry about that. I agree. Let, let's go back to special ed. Tracking special ed, I think that special ed has increased. The trend is it's increasing. Over the past four years, I bet you see significant increases. So to say we yes, we're yes, going to see yes. a drop off, or see, I don't foresee that the trend line tells me that's always going to be a crutch of the, the school system from the point of the spending and the cost, which we should do. Hold on. So don't think I'm not for it. But the trend shows and the de demographics of the town with these way we're bringing in these apartments and everything else, the trend is your, your special ed's going up. We've shown it. Every graph that Mr. Brill's shown in the last four years has shown this going up. So to say that we're going to see an ebb and a flow, I think, is maybe, but I think the more more line is it's going to increase every year. It's I don't think increase. we're expecting to see fewer special ed students. Right. So I think what we're hoping for is to be able to service them in house more more than we can now to right but i've seen i've lived through that too i've lived through the outsourcing i've lived through the insourcing i've lived through the the growing of the i've lived through the we're going to bring it in house we're going to reduce overheads by so much you know outsourcing and then we grew overheads to a point where you had to because you have to, to meet the ieps and everything I still think it's an increasing thing. It's increased every year that I've watched this number. It's increased. I've never once sat at one of these meetings in the past five years and heard special ed decreased. And I have, I over 15 years I have. So that's why I, I, I But we were I also dealing with 8% like different things and now we're up to 13%, correct? And the IUTs, 14%. 14%. So that 8%, yes, I agree. But now we're in a new era, we're at 14%. It's a whole, to me, it's a different, might be. I just uh, that all you need is a handful of uh, outplaced kids, and it changes your equation dramatically. So that's why, again, I come back to this model and trying to hold it as tight as possible because there's there's costs you can't control, and, and that's what we got to guard against. And yep, and that's them right here, actually. Yeah, because without this list, we were at three percent. In fact, we were a little under three percent, if I recall. Thirteen point nine, which I thought was awesome. How's that? Anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was awesome. Right. I just wish we didn't have these outside influences. Yes. Sorry, can I back up to, I you know that that's more of an overview, but I had some questions with the investment necessities mm -hmm. that sure. you um, So the pre-K teacher on here is 85490 but in our binder it's 67490 This is what benefits. That's what that's yes. yes. So it's broken down in the binder with salary and benefits. Yep. Um, separate. So that's the other question is on um, the 2018-19 anticipated budget adjustments. There's 104,000 dollars for the World Language Lab in the middle school, and how does that impact the ask? 104,000 is total. Um, wait, 104 for the World. Uh, the footnote in the detail section. The 104,000 is an offset. 25,000 to the for the Chromebook uh, revenues. And seventy-nine thousand one hundred eighty-four dollars from the um, non-lapsing fund. Okay, so that's why it's in the eighteen nineteen. Yeah. Yes. The World Language Lab shows up in the new. Uh, right. There's the fifty thousand. Right. World Language Labs. I mean, that's not going to be recouped until the next that's a one you know get it installed in the software so that's an invest so that's a fifty thousand dollars mm -hmm. the next year the, the world language Correct. lab is, is believe it or not that's mostly software yeah. and some chromebooks with it it would be on a cart that would go from class to class we had asked and this was prior to us knowing even whether the referendum was going to pass mm -hmm. because with that when we're having 25 percent of the students out we might actually be able to have a, a permanent world language lab right at which time we can take the world language, the mobile lab, and kind of pretty much install it into a classroom. Right. So it's not being yeah. to the deal at that point. In the realm of talking about thing, 
next year's budget proposal and you know trying to hold this three percent model line you know, just looking at items in here that would be recurring in sure. next year's budget. Sure. So, yeah. Increasing the benefits. Why the why the why the benefits is going up four hundred and twenty five thousand when salary increases are six eighty five. It just seems disproportional. If I could see kind of what's just driving that. I can cry that. Thank you. Wasn't that I think that was actually in one of the notes I thought. That was in one of the uh, questions from the Board of Education, so I can I can dig that up and okay. Part of the reason it's disproportional is uh, health benefits increases are going up close to eight percent versus salaries going up at uh, about three percent. So that's why that's the biggest single reason you would see a dip disproportionality. And then the second piece, if I remember, Ken, was an increasing number of family plans instead of individual. Plans. Yes. So we'll, we'll get but I have the exact yeah, right now. Yeah, we already have it and we get it updated. Yeah, that's what we have it here. So Satan, not a That was one of the questions I asked. Yes. <laughs> To a to a bottom line, but on a line by line item, there's lots of variances that are that are sizable. So I'm wondering if the budget that you present is where you kind of manage how you manage line item by line item to get to the bottom line, and is it more of a, of a guideline that you that you manipulate, not manipulate, that you manage during the course of the year, or do you when you do look at the budgets and manage the budgets, do you manage on a line item by line item basis? Yes. Absolutely, we try to. We're going to get variances. So, Dan, what, what we do is we actually get out budgets to the schools at line item by line item, and uh, then we put additional controls in the TSO uh, in terms of approval on things that are maybe broader than the schools. So, you know, most of the budget is salary, as you, you know, as you can imagine. Like, for example, Ken manages the. Um, the employee benefits costs directly. He manages the, the transportation uh, contract directly. He manages the facility stuff directly. The, the schools have a, uh, a very individual uh, line items that they manage to. Um, but in a large organization like this, stuff happens. You know, you have somebody who goes out uh, on maternity, unpaid maternity, and you have to go hire a substitute. So you end up having an overrun on the substitute line and an underrun on the salary line. We're constantly dealing with that. So what we have is a finance committee who actually reviews this every month, line item by line item, to uh, make sure we're understanding why things are changing and what actions are we taking to make sure we can uh, can be managed within that. And I, I actually chair that. Right, yeah. And so, are there, when there is, when there are overruns, which there are going to be, yeah. do you, as chair of that committee, already know areas that you can take from? We, 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 we actually launched some of those last night. Yes, we approve them um, there, and then it actually goes to the full board, and the full board has to vote on moving those funds from one item to the other. That was a, one of the, we've been working on our policies to make sure there was tight controls with all that's going on in the district. One of the things we did was put a budgetary control module in, 
where uh, they carry things to the board for budget change approval, yeah. so, which has been helpful, I think. Right. Um, but in any case, um, we do, for example, we had just last night, we, not, we saw some exposures on uh, a couple of special ed situations that were actually increases, and we had a very active discussion with, uh, with Mr. Post about, well, what are the areas that we should be uh, freezing now, mm -hmm. right, but you know, only a couple months left in the school year so that we can make our number. Mm -hmm. So very active and conscious, you know, focus when things like that happen. So it was included last night? We're going to have to uh, put some freezes on discretionaries. Like we did last year, yeah. sadly. So yeah. it's, uh, you, I hate to do that, but that's that's what we had. Uh, had a couple of extra students, uh, one new one show up in the district, and one where we had to send them out of district. So it's uh, it's uh, it's just something you had to deal with, uh, constantly having to deal with you know things that change. Are any of those changes um, material enough to revise what's been presented here? No, we asked that last night, no. and it'll be fine. Yeah, it's thirty, forty thousand dollars. I mean, it's, that wasn't swinging the entire equation around. So, but tactically managed. By the way, I, I'll, well, we've offered this in the past. We would love to have one of the members of the board of uh, finance come sit with us on that committee. Uh, we had, uh, this town controller, uh, Mrs. Marion, has joined us and it's been very productive uh, in terms of communication and getting things done. So I would offer that, continue to offer that to the, the Board of Finance to come join us. It would be great. And those are at 530 on? 530 on Saturday. Monday. Monday. Okay. Anyone that's ready, willing, able at 530 <laughs> on Monday, you can move to Stanford. Or Farmington. It's a bit difficult. No, no, I understand. To, uh, yeah. to do that at 5.30. Yeah. Well, um, how we should post minutes, I think, right? We do post oh, that minutes. Committee. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, um, and uh, and we, uh, we, you know, it's, it's a great plug. We do things like we review every expenditure over $1,000, right? That's from the vestiges of the problem we had a couple of years ago to make sure that we're at our board is actually looking at those. We look at the budget reports. We talk about the issues of the day. We talk about the, you know, the budget process that's going on. Um, you know, we have uh, some, uh, we talk about the student activity fund, you know, a lot of different, we talked about the audit last night, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a good, it's a mini board of finance, <laughs> but for the, uh, for the board of that. Uh, it's very comforting to hear that you have that line by line scrutiny on your side of these subcommittees. So you actually said the word discretion. So you said that you have some discretion. When you bring out yet, you realize you're, you're going to be possibly, you're going to have to account for additional special ed costs. And you're looking elsewhere in your budget for discretion areas where you can pull that. Where are those areas? It's usually supplies. So supplies, supplies at, the at the school level. So it's books, <coughs> it's uh, textbook purchases, um, it's they're things that they're pertinent things. So they're very pertinent, yeah. but they're things you can tactically deal with. You know, sliding out forty thousand dollars, you had a forty million dollar budget, you would tactically manage that. Um, you'd have to cut back on some IT purchases. Uh, you'd cut, you know, okay, we're not going to have as many new Chromebooks this year, right? Of course, you don't want to do those, but it's things you have to do on one percent of your budget. You know when that sort of thing happens. Because I was on the conference call with the auditors today as well. Dan, and last year you finished with a sixty-six thousand dollars surplus. So basically, you're, you're you landed the plane, as I've heard multiple people on the board said, which is really where you want to be. But what you also want to be doing is coming up with these discretionary areas and look to say, hey, is this really what we need to run this business? Yeah. And, that, and that's. And that's what we do in the budget. So we, that's exactly what we do in the budget. And unfortunately, the last couple of years, because of the special ed growth, as we talked about with Mr. Rooney a couple of minutes ago, we have had to go squeeze out all those nice, the, I, I don't even want to call them nice, necessary uh, things we do in the classrooms. And uh, uh, Dr. Ruby has been bending our ear every time we have a budget meeting about the lack of classroom libraries, and that's what's uh, that's what's causing that. So we would love to have a year where we don't have surprises, right? Because then we could go do what we need, what we plan to do. And, and just to add, John, another part of last year, not to blame everything on the increases in special education, we all recall the the uncertainty of the state budget last year, and so we, we froze very early on um, those school level spendings and things like that. Um, so that that impacted why we had the uh, the surplus. 
for us so early. Unfortunately, we live without a lot of situations. Anything else on the school operating budget? Does anyone have any questions or comments on the capital requests? Obviously, the new school was approved, so we'll be looking at the capital with that, um, which I believe aligns with what was presented as if the new school is approved in the board binder. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns? Anything more? That's in section seven of the binder. Have priorities changed? Um, I mean, you, you did this budget a couple months ago, right? Um, have any of your priorities changed as far as what you were planning to spend uh, capital money on or the town you know, uh, for these projects? Same priorities. Same priorities. Same priorities. Same priorities. And then anything in pink, just as a reminder with our key there, goes away because those were mm -hmm. from the as well. I think this is consistent with what we got in mm -hmm. the. Uh, in the Board of Selectmen's cut as well. Mm -hmm. And then the, the um, paving and concrete for Center School is decreased, but that's the other one that's changed. I understand um, we ask for a budget that meets the school's needs and that's really where what you presented to us and you know I think it's short-sighted to um, cut a budget by cutting programs that have been asked for for years and we can't just we can't stay stagnant because we're trying to reach a number we need to have smart decisions and how money is used which is what you guys work do um, so I I do want to make sure that we're supporting a budget that goes out to the voters that gives us the programs that we need and progresses us towards our, our goals. Um, so I, I understand um, the 3% line, um, but at the same time, I, I, don't, I personally don't feel that that's something we need to limit ourselves to. Just to, for the record, I'm looking at the selectmen's budget. The paving and concrete for center wasn't reduced to 267,500. It's completely been removed. So there's no reduction there. It's just been completely eliminated. It's not why I. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you guys aren't surprised. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yep. Find things that go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pink came out, a lot of pink. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. No, I'm not. We're good. That paving at center. Um, do you feel that's still a requirement? Is it something that can get by? Your safety issues? Yeah, it, it is. I don't think we can get by it. I'd have, like to invite our facility director up to explain that portion of it. Good evening. Good catcher. Do you want to write Dan Caldwell? Not Dan Caldwell, but the facilities. So, what we did in evaluating the, the paving, a lot of this came um, with the help of Tecton. We had our, our capital projects in mind we look at their uh, what they sent forth to us with their evaluation of existing conditions so um, <clears throat> when we put these numbers together we utilize unit pricing square footage square yards that will allow us to expand and contract uh, the project based on funding that's available we also try to um, limit it to certain areas sections so we could we could do it in phasing not knowing how this new school project may or may not proceed. So, um, are there specific questions about quantities? I think the uh, I think the amount that we left in there was to do the loop around the back of the building. Correct. 
that's, that's, that's the worst. Maybe, maybe you could just spend the, the need of that, Dan. I think that's really the question. Sure. So um, uh, throughout the uh, paved area at Center Elementary School, there's a tremendous amount of erosion. There's been no maintenance on that parking lot. I've been on board here for four years, and with the exception of some uh, some hot patch and cold patch of, of potholes, we have not done uh, any work at Center Elementary. So just through normal erosion and lack of a maintenance program for that, it's, it's beyond the point where uh, we could do a resurface. So just about anything we do would require uh, milling and perhaps uh, without knowing existing conditions underneath would require uh, full base removal and, and reinstallation. So um, again, we've got, give me a moment, uh, and I did not bring I did not bring the center with me, but the unit pricing would probably be comparable. Get the other paving. But I remember the issue was in the back. It was something particularly bad in the back. Correct. Versus the front. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, Again, prioritizing, so when we looked at, at paving as a whole, um, existing conditions with, with Tecton, that was a, a number one issue throughout when we looked at facilities. And so we went through and uh, sectioned off buildings, phasing similar to uh, paving projects that we did at Wismier. We had like four or five phases included, knowing that we couldn't, uh, couldn't do it in, in a single project. So this is where the back, this is student entrance, uh, parent drop off rather um, it's a very constricted area it's only only uh, barely wide enough for a passenger car our oil delivery we have to we're forced to have a small tank for delivery because we can't get a big truck all the way around so the issue is the width not the actual oh it's a combination it's a combination okay. yeah combination and of because it's so narrow it's kind of eroding away on the sides and becoming narrower yeah that's, that's why we identified that as the, the greatest need. That's yeah. So there's an, what is there, what's the need over the next three years for that? I mean, uh, I, obviously if this were going to be a school for the, for the foreseeable future, it would be one, one, one set of, the, of, of needs. But, I mean, is there a safety concern? Is there a, is there a liability concern that, that a parent's going to drive through and tear off the bottom of their car and sue? Or, or is this something that will make you know, life easier but not necessarily necessary for the next three years while this school is in operation and there's an ad hoc committee to determine what to do with the property overall sure so uh, along those lines a safety issue because uh, it's no longer a smooth seamless surface uh, anywhere um, it's uh, it's been broken up through frost and uh, moisture has penetrated throughout so one I guess this this year or this time of the year is most prevalent frost is in the ground Frost to use the driveways pick up, and they, they don't settle back. So there, there's a tremendous amount of uh, degradation on that paving. Uh, you can pick a spot. I think I think the section around the loop is because it has the greatest amount of activity. Um, certainly there are trip hazards throughout. Some of those we maintain through general maintenance. And we've done some grinding of concrete uh, in the past uh, to lower raised uh, surfaces. Not really an option with the. Uh, the asphalt surfaces they're just they're broken up beyond serviceability so the nine hundred thousand that was completely redo it from scratch was it yeah and i'm i'm sorry ken if you had yes. i did not bring the, the center right. yeah that was to reduce replace all pavement sidewalks and curbing except for the main entrance plaza east playground walkway and how much longer is center school going to be used three, three and a half years three, three and a half years. so if you didn't know what you were going to do with the property would you still feel very strongly that that was a worthwhile expenditure it's a bond for 20 years I'm sure for that. It, with this current use it's necessary for for safety security of, of students and, and staff because you spend so less and touch yeah what can we do to make it sure so if, if we spend less if, if if we weren't if we weren't to um to look to a full-blown replacement if we were to skip on a sub base uh, you'd be paving on top of unstable material. You wouldn't get the longevity out of that project. You'd get three years. You would otherwise, um, you would get three years out of it. You, you Can we get that price? So I don't want to speak for the board of selectmen, but I think generally they're um, taking a wait and see attitude sure. with that property. Sure. So they don't want to make any major. I'm assuming that's the. Uh, 
logic behind it, I, I, I can say that. Sure, we looked at some of these, some of this paving Sorry. initially with, uh, with just a, a mill and resurface and then some that comes out completely with the new subbix. So uh, we can get back to you with some unit pricing on, on that. I think it's pretty easy to define that. We also have uh, square footage you know, areas that, that give you a picture of the whole number. I mean, I'll just say that it's my opinion that if it's not an imminent safety risk and it's not impacting instruction, there's no reason to, to, to do it at all. That's my opinion. But so, so uh, my question is, is there an imminent safety risk yeah. to the way it's? That's the question. I would hesitate to say yes to that. Which is why I think Good. we play those and come back. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Because yeah. we'll go around on this one. Yeah. 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 We ought to find out and, and get to you exactly what the burden is for us. So we have a three years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that would be that. That would be that. Come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't the kids play on this? Don't they, they cross utilize this? They don't. They cross over in winter time. They're not out there on this utilizing. I don't think they play on that. That's, that's, that's sure. It's part I, I said I don't think. Drive, you know, the pickup. Pick up. Is that where the parent pickup? Yeah, the parent yeah. pickup. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about yeah. that yeah. in the back part. Yeah. Yeah. Right I'm pretty right. sure they utilize it. The kids utilize that. Mm -hmm. On the side where the parent drop off is. Yeah. I think that because that's how by their playground it's all it's fenced off during yeah. the daytime. Mm -hmm. So I think they have that area to. We'll come, we'll come back as part yeah. of that. Yeah. I think it's definitely a tripping hazard for uh, yeah. by the children. Yeah. I'm not saying it should be. Yeah. I just okay. think from my knowing what goes on center school. It's a quick call to the principal. We'll have an answer on that as part of all this. Yeah. Back to you. Because that changes the question around from Dan's point of view pretty fast. Anything else on any other capital items that were presented yet? Let's see what else is Can you describe the security upgrades that are going to be going into the school? We aren't going, we can't go into full description with that. Um, because, yes, because by doing the security upgrades, then we're identifying what we need security upgrades. Understood. If if you are, we, we are happy to bring you an executive session and describe them later. It's just not anything we want to do in public. It may or may not include things like um, extra cameras, uh, security software, PA system, glazing, things like that. Point eight. Hardware issues. No, no kind of things. But again, we'd be happy to have anybody invited into any executive session discussions on that, and we can talk more freely in there about it. And if you have any further questions, just um, send them to you know either secretary or chair, and they'll forward them to us, and we're happy to get you the answers as soon as we can. All right. Okay. Are there any adoring members of the public that would like to give comments? Okay, hearing and seeing none. I will adjourn the board of finance. All those in favor? Board of finance is good. And without objection, board of minutes,